All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me here on my first podcast of the year. I'm going to say this like I say every year. I am really going to try to put out more podcasts this year. <laughs> the thing about it is, you know, I say that every year and then I don't get that many out. I actually really love podcasting. If I'm honest with you, the reason that it's it's that I don't do that many is because I have to sit back and edit them. And sometimes they're an hour or two hours long and I cannot stand to listen to myself for two hours. I don't know how you guys do it, but I just can't stand it. That's a terrible excuse. Uh, really, I just need to, to put it in my schedule and do it because I really enjoy this format. I really enjoy being able to answer questions and go in depth on them and explore topics. And I know it's just a great way for those of you that like to learn this way. It's a great way for you to absorb things. And it's, it's kind of good background fodder that you can keep on during the day. I get it. I listen to podcasts too. So I really hope that I can do more of these. Now, today I've got something a little bit different here. As you probably noticed last year, I did a few interview podcasts. I actually like to interview interesting people. And we have a super interesting guest today, two guests. One is my good friend, Paul Jamison, and he brought in a guest, the lawn care juggernaut. And that's really what we were talking about. And we'll get into that in a minute. But before we do, uh, I wanted to give a quick shout out. So a student from Lincoln Way High School District 210. That's in Illinois, so over by there. That's so over uh, on the southwest side of Chicago, over by there, like the Frankfurt area. I think it kind of borders on Will County over by there a little bit, but the Lincoln Way School District is huge. And uh, apparently there's a teacher there. And I don't have the name. The student wanted to keep the name private, which I get. But he did want his teacher to get this shout out. And I'll just read it, what he wrote, because he reached out to me and asked if I'd give him a shout out. And it says here, let me put my glass areos on. Shout out to the best AP economics teacher in the Lincoln Way High School District 210. Keep inspiring the junior class of 2024 to learn their numbers and never lose that motivation to take care of their lawn. Awesome shout out there. So what's happening is that teacher is, is teaching economics, but also working in some lawn care tips over there. I like that teach, huh? Let's get that young generation ready to go get them excited about their lawns. Maybe some of them can get out now and take care of the lawn for their parents. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, it's just really cool that we have a teacher there in the Lincoln Way High School District 210 sharing his love for lawn care with his students. So I think that's awesome. Anytime you're getting somebody excited about learning how to enjoy the mow, it's always a good thing. So that's really cool. And uh, thank you again for sharing my content out there, Teach over by there. All right, with that, I'm going to get right into this podcast again. We'll get back to the normal scheduled podcast, the normal format of Q&A. We're going to get into that really soon, but today is really special. You guys have probably heard about this guy. He's a YouTuber called the Lawn Care Juggernaut, Kevin Hansen. He is one of those guys, or he is the guy that started that genre of where you do the, the, the um, what do they call it? Uh, not pleasingly satisfying, but oddly satisfying, where you're watching someone mow a lawn, and in his case, they're overgrown, derelict properties are really bad. You watch throughout, and in the end, you have this beautiful transformation, and in between, there's always something crazy that happens, right? He's the one that kind of started that genre, and what he does with his, and now what a lot of his buddies do that also work with him, uh, or, or are his collaborators, they do, uh, they do it for charity. So they find someone that's in need. Maybe their, their property got overgrown and they come in and they're going to get kicked out of their house. They're going to HOA violation or something like that. So they come in and help them and they donate to them and, and that. And, and it just makes for just this whole really nice package of really positive content on the internet. So I've known about the lawn care juggernaut for a while, but I've never actually uh, met him real quick. One time we, we ran across each other's paths at the GIE Expo. We didn't get a chance to talk or anything. So this was the first time I actually got to sit down with him and understand who is he? How did he start? What's his origin story? What's his goals in life? You know, all that kind of stuff. Because this guy is at 710,000 subscribers after, I think, three, maybe four years. So he is just on this meteoric rise. And you're going to find he's a smart guy and he understands that he needs to capitalize on that while he has it. So we kind of got into that. I probably... If I would have known where the conversation was going or if I was more sharp, I would have got more into the business side with him. But perhaps we can have him back another time. But he was basically in town doing um, a job. And he was with my friend, Paul Jamison. Paul Jamison runs the Green Industry Podcast. Paul is who I call the ultimate connector in the community. Just gets together with all kinds of people, collaborates, brings them on his podcast, goes on there. He's at all the different conferences and everything. And thank you, Paul, for bringing in the juggernaut so we could do 
this interview. So, so I hope you guys enjoy this and I will give you links in the description to his videos as well as a couple other folks that he mentions and uh, go give them a follow, give them a like, give them a shout out. But I hope you enjoy this interview with my friend Paul Jamison and Kevin Hansen, the lawn care juggernaut. Record, test, test. All right, here we go. Welcome today on the podcast. I have with me Kevin Hansen, the lawn care juggernaut. We're going to hear all about him. And I'm sure many of you have seen him on YouTube. And I also have my friend Paul Jamison from the Green Industry Podcast. So welcome back, Paul. Glad to have you on. And Kevin, glad to have you here today. We're just going to go impromptu. These guys have been on the road all day. In fact, what were you guys doing this morning and why are you in Florida? Why don't we just go there? Um, so I travel around and I find people that are in need of uh, lawn service. A lot of the times that's like um, a disaster cut. And mm -hmm. I'll get it cleaned up. I do it completely free for them. And I make videos, put it on YouTube. So it's satisfying for people. We got a lot of support there. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So how did you, uh, where are you from originally? Uh, or where do you live now, I guess? <laughs> I'm based out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay, so what brought you to Florida? Just that job? Are you here on a series of jobs? Or is um, that working? No, I've got a couple buddies that do this as well. So I met up with them. We did a, a collaboration. We had um, some abandoned mansions. It was like a, a compound of abandoned mansions. There was like six or eight of them out there. Mm -hmm. So we each took on one, and um, we were going to collaborate on one at the end. We were all dead tired. It took way more than we thought it would, but we uh, that's more like a fun video. You know what I mean? It's the challenge. It's something super entertaining. It's not so much helping somebody. So these abandoned mansions are somewhere here in Florida? Oh, yeah. Can you, Are you allowed to say where they are? Um. It's Lake, man, I'm going to butcher it, Pan Paniscot. Mm, it's, like, it's like an hour away. Paniscotski? I'm, I'm not sure. Lake Paniscot? It's, it's like an hour What's south of Ocala. In, really? Abandoned mansions. So it's, is this a by, thing? It's by Wildwood. That's where I stayed at the RV park. Okay, so is this one of those things where, like, uh, you know, a lot of people like to film Urban Decay, like the proper people and some of these other YouTube channels where they go in and film. Is this one of those kind of things where it's an attraction like that or? You mean as far as like viewerships? Like yeah, the, is this, a, is this an, a destination people go to to look at these abandoned mansions? Is it something people know about? No. Well, um, they're up for sale, but nobody really knows about them because they're way out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And um, that property was crazy. So I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown on the property. Some guy here in Florida, I think he was based out of Tampa or Miami, owned a roofing company. And this is like mm. pre-2008. Okay. Um, had a lot of money. Got an approval for a house to build somewhere in Tampa or Miami or wherever it was. Took that same design, horrible design, odd layout on the house. Committed all the way, built like eight of them. So ah. it started out, he built one for himself and his wife. Then started building one for each of his kids. Ended up hooking up with his secretary at work. She got pregnant, had a kid. Built one for her. Moved that in. There was some uh, complications fighting with the family after that. I can imagine. Um, and then there's all sorts of crazy stories around it. So one of the people that bought the house out there, they they bought the property directly from him. But there were 68 title transfers on that property. So they're in litigation right now trying to get it actually squared away. Oh, that sounds fun. Okay. Yeah, so there were, <laughs> there was some fraudulent stuff going on. Yeah. Um, and from what I was told, a lot of um, a lot of drug stuff going on mm -hmm. and possible human trafficking as well. It was oh, wow. a very weird spot, but nothing. When we went out there, we're just like, oh, this is some really weird abandoned properties. But... I guess he, he dug moats between all the properties, too. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> and they were putting alligators in because they were fighting with the family members. So I guess that was to keep them away. And then I heard another story that he dug that and was wanting to uh, use a boat to get between each house. I have no idea. This is like some Tiger King thing. It, it only in it, Florida, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a Florida thing for sure. And so did you guys have to get permission to do this, or did you just show up out of nowhere to just do it? Um, so my buddy Al Blades called me. Okay. Yeah, I watched and, this. Um, he said, hey, I found this property, and he, at this time, we only thought there was one. He's like, I found this property. You want to come down and cut it? Okay. So he starts looking into it a little more. He's like, there's like five of them out there. 
there, there's more of them out there. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, let's roll. So I scheduled to come down here, and uh, I was going to take off in the first of the month. We ended up getting an ice storm. That delayed me a little bit. Um, but I drove like 18 hours, not knowing if we could even get it. Mm-hmm. But we would have went in any either way. So gotcha. It's all good. Yeah. Um, I would have totally went in without permission. Um, but anyways, he we got a hold of the realtor. The realtor was totally cool with it. She said, You would think, yeah. She said she thought it was a little weird, thought maybe we were going <laughs> to actually uh, start squatting in the houses or something. Right. But no, she was super happy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and she said there was an estimate to clean up the houses for $6,000 a piece. Of course, that's the house plus like five acres. We just mm-hmm. cleaned up around the houses, made it entertaining. Gave up, you know, we, we all did like three days of solid work, sun up to sundown, said, that's enough. Yeah. And so yeah. when is this coming out on YouTube? So um, I'll put, e- each of them will be put out kind of in chunks because there's such a big video. Uh, I'll put out um, part of his video already. AP put out a part of his video. I'm on a, I did a tour last year where I went to like, uh, it was supposed to be 10 states, and then it evolved and kept going. But mm-hmm. I went to 12 states last year. Um, but right now I'm on a tour. I don't know what to call it. For myself, <laughs> I'm calling it the 100 Days of Hell. Okay. Um, and that just comes down to me working hard. So I've always associated spring in the lawn care business as the 100 Days of Hell. You don't get any days off. Yeah. You're working like crazy. It's painful. Mm-hmm. It's hard on your body. It's rough on your, your relationship and your marriage and everything. Um but I'm committing the same way to my YouTube channel. So I'm doing 100 days without taking a day off. So it's whether that means I'm driving, scouting for jobs, whatever it might be, 100 days, no days, or 100 days with no days off. When that's done, I'll spend a couple um, – calm down, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys can't see it or if you're on the podcast, he's got his dog here, Doofy. Yeah. <laughs> Cute. Um, so anyways, I'll, I'll take a few weeks off with the family when mm-hmm. that's done. And then from there – I'm probably going to do it again. Do you have an overarching goal for that? Are you um, bringing awareness to something, or are you just challenging yourself, challenging your audience? What's the... Um, I just like doing it, and I like helping people. Yeah. And I got to the end of last year. Last year was amazing. So we traveled around. We went to all these different states, and I was working one to three days a week, you know, doing what I do, cutting properties, and spending the rest of the time with my family or driving to the next state, whatever. It was amazing, but um, you know that feeling you get at the end of the year, and you're like, I could have done so much more. Hmm. Okay. Well, that hit hard, and I'm like, I don't really like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna commit, and for this the same way I worked hard in my business is the same way I'm gonna treat YouTube this year. Okay. And probably the next two years, and then I'll be honest, I don't know if I'm ever gonna make a tall grass video again. Really? Why is that? Well, I mean, by the end of that, I'll probably have 10 years worth of content. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing, but maybe I'll switch to painting houses. I painted a house with my dad for a woman in Arkansas. We did it completely free. Spent like six days there. I got you. Okay, so it's going to evolve into Yeah, maybe I'll switch to something else. Yeah. Just, I imagine three years of doing repeated. The the thing is, I'm traveling now, so I can work 365 days a year. Yeah, Next. I saw your rig out there. You pull in your house with you. Exactly. Your travel trailer yeah, and your equipment. First nomadic lawn care guy in the world, I can, right? I mean, it's impressive. <laughs> yeah, so I um, next year I'll be in Florida for January, February. As the weather changes, I'll start Good going idea. up north. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't, I, I don't know, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work myself to death physically, and then I'm going to find something else to do, and um, I'm going to enjoy it along the way, but I get to do really cool stuff. So I'm, I'm probably one of the luckiest lawn care guys, mm-hmm. even though arguably the type of work I'm doing is probably one of the, the hardest physical type, type of, uh, work you could do in the lawn care industry. <laughs> for sure. And for YouTube, probably one of the hardest niches you could do. Um, so for everybody that is doing it, keep it up because I know it's hard work, but anyways, um, I don't know. I'll switch to something else. I, I'm going to get bored with it eventually. Right now, I, I still love it. It makes like sense. It. Yeah. That's but, actually why. That's a wise way to look at it. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I've gone over the top so much. Like last year in uh, South Carolina, we did an abandoned mini golf course in Myrtle Beach. 
And so that's like, the one where the guy came up to you, right? And he was kind of mad at first. Oh yeah, but he was totally cool. Like yeah, after he, you told him what you were doing. No, no, it was weird. He was super mad, and then he saw the camera and calmed himself completely down. Ah, okay. He didn't even understand it, but he's like, I like it. It's cool. Yeah. And he could tell I was, you know, I feel like I can take pretty much anybody from a 10 to a 2 just mm-hmm. by talking with them for a few minutes, and then it's all good. Right. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. But I, I feel like with as crazy as I have taken it on the oddball ones, I call those my trophy cuts, you know, like the same way somebody <laughs> like hunting. Would, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll find like the craziest ones that are just a challenge to me. And, but at a certain point, I'm, I'm not even surprised anymore when I get into stuff. I'm like, Phew. you know, we did one today. It ended up being a two part job. I, I don't know. A few years ago, I'd have been like, oh, this is such a crazy job. I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm like, that's another day. I thought it was going to be a half day job. It ended up being a two day job. That's all right. What made it crazy? Um, well, you're definitely going to see it when you see the video. But yeah. I mean, there were ferns growing out of the the gutters, which were way <laughs> harder to pull out than I thought. <laughs> Getting a real <laughs> dose of Florida. The jungle grows everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know the jungle scene in Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, that's how I can describe that okay. backyard. Yeah, but that's normal Florida. I mean, this is the tropics, you know. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. F- Florida's Florida's like a cutting lawns in a different country when it comes to crazy stuff. Oh, yeah, sorry, we got you back. <laughs> I tell people in Florida that the jungle is always trying to retake the land. Yeah. Hold on, my cord's got me. Yeah, the, I always say the jungle's trying to retake the land. That's Florida for you. So, well, Paul, what are you doing? Uh, and Sit. we're going to go back a little more into Kevin's origin story. But Paul, what are you doing in Florida? You just hanging out? I mean, you're you're the guy that knows everybody. You're the connector. So, what are you guys doing right now? What's your well, I got connected with the juggernaut before he blew up on YouTube, and I don't get asked for autographs that often, but he came up to me. At, at a, it used to be called GIE, yeah. and he had a hat, and he's like, hey, man, can you can you sign this hat? He's giving it away. I think he had you sign it as well. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So I called Mr. Producer, my podcast producer, and I was like, hey, I signed my first autograph, and this guy <laughs> named Kevin Hansen, he came That's up to awesome, me, and man. so my head was bigger than the balloon, and... Uh, I just thought it was so cool. So, so anyway, I knew Kevin from back, you know, back in the day. And then he started doing these, he was the pioneer of doing, uh, yard transformations. Now there's a lot of people doing them. Well, Mm -hmm. one of his channels has over 500,000 subscribers. His second channel. Your big one's at almost at 800 right now, right? Uh, it's like 710. Yeah. And then the boring channel, that's the other one, right? Yeah. And TikTok, we got like. 730 makes sense yeah facebook i screwed up i messed up my personal facebook page Uh uh-huh i i was wanting to mess with reels couldn't figure out how to post them to my my channel page post them on my personal page and then like a week later i looked at it almost two hundred thousand followers and um hundreds of comments probably (laughs) thousands of not not comments but messages Uh uh-huh i put up this video i did a leaf cleanup a couple years ago right and I had a buddy working with me, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to make this YouTube video. I'll just get compensated on the YouTube video. I never ended up putting it out. It's a huge project. Um, but, you know, I, I told him, I said, how much do you want to get paid? Because, you know, I just wanted help. And he said, well, you know, if I can make $13, $14 an hour while I'm out here helping you, that'd be great. I was like, well, you know, I'm billing you $80 an hour, so how about I just give you that? And uh, so wow. at the end of the job, he worked with me for like a day. I gave him 600 bucks, and so that was in the – the real mm-hmm. and people saw that. Oh, and they like I, that. I had thousands of messages. They're like, I'll fly to you. I'll work with you full time as much as you <laughs> want, as much overtime. And I'm like, yeah, that was, that was kind of a one-time thing. That's not sustainable in business. Right. Which is, you know, why business owners don't pay that much, but uh, yeah, and I never ended up putting that video out. Fun other stuff. than TikTok. So, but anyways, my bad. No, <laughs> all good. I love the stories. You learn. Yeah, and that's why I'm in Florida, to learn from Juggernaut. So, Jason Creel, Creel, Mm -hmm. Creel, uh, Caleb Allman, Naylor Taliaferro, and Corey Ballard and I joined a YouTube mastermind. We we hired a YouTube coach. His name's Jeremy Vest. He's been helping us, and he's been telling me, he's like, you need to collaborate, you need to collaborate, you need to collaborate. And so, Kevin called me out of the blue. I hadn't talked to you in maybe a year. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. So, he called me out of the blue, and he's like, hey. Uh, you want to grab dinner or breakfast? And I'm like, yes, let's, you know, let's do it. And like I said, he has 
five hundred thousand subs on one channel, over almost eight hundred thousand on the other channel. And yeah. if you Google incognito mode, your name for lawn care, his name is the first thing that pops up: lawn care juggernaut. So I'm intrigued by how much knowledge the juggernaut has. So I was like, of course I want to, I want to meet up with you. Yeah. So anyway, he's like, where, where I'm going to Florida. And I was like, really? And I was like, well, I'll, we could, instead of meeting in Atlanta, I can just meet you in Florida. And he's like, come on down. So I came on down and for two days I've been shadowing him. He's been showing me how he, um, I didn't realize it's more like a movie, like the way he thinks of setting up a, a YouTube video. It's like a Hollywood production. And when you watch it, you don't, it just looks effortless, but the amount of time that he's put into his videos was mind blowing to me. So mm-hmm. I just asked him if I could shadow him for a few days and see what he does and, and learn. And I've been, uh, he's been putting me to school. So that's awesome. You, I think it, your, your niche is interesting because it's lawn care and, and business and that, but it's also the oddly satisfying side of it. Yeah. Like the before and after, like people just got, I know you have to see to the end you and you can't skip because when you skip, you miss how, how it happens. So you have to see the whole thing. So how did you discover this, Kevin? Did you just do this on a whim one day or and how long ago was it? Just tell me, first of all, how old are you? Uh, 31. 31. All right. You're, sir, you're a young man. You're, you're right into those, you're in those good years. I say that, uh, for a man, your most productive years are 30 to 33 and a half. And that's because that's when Christ decided to do his public ministry. And I figure if, if you're going to choose an age and you're God, you're going to choose the best age. So I would, and I look back on my life and I actually had some of my best years from 30 to 33 and a half. So <clears throat> that's pretty cool that you're in that. So tell me, how did you get started doing this and why? Um, so I've been in the lawn industry for 10 years now, but as far as videos go, it actually started way before I started making videos. So you, you're a pioneer, one of the OGs of lawn care videos, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, you remember Greg Chisholm's videos? I do. He is the OG of OGs. Correct. He was before me. I learned how to make videos from watching his videos. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, I was paying attention to his angles and how he did it. So he had like really long, hour-long videos. Yeah. And Don't then be he scared. shared tips. Don't be scared. Stuff. Freaks. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. Sitting out there eating his 7-Eleven in his truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell 7-Eleven stories. Remember those? Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. He yeah. is. See how many, of us he ins- chips. how many of us he inspired? So crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're a guy, you're doing regular lawn service, like yeah. blow and blow, and you're kind of watching him on the as entertainment and learning? or well, No, I was watching him religiously and learning the craft and how to how to actually okay. um, you know, do work. But he, he also hit me at a, a certain time period, because his wasn't just lawn care. It was like his philosophy on life and, you mm-hmm. know, showing his work ethic and just different things going on. So it, he almost was like a second father figure for this transitioning period in my life where, you know, I'm newly married, my child's on the way, I'm starting a business, I'm in a new city, and I'm scared out of my mind. But there's this guy with a push mower that's like, dude, you can do it too. You mm-hmm. can make 100 bucks a day. Don't and at the scared. time, I was like, 100 bucks a day? I could work 30 days a, a month Start and I'll doing make math. three grand. That'd be all right. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what I was making at the factory before. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be okay. We struggled for a couple of years. We started figuring it out. That got me going, motivated, learning the techniques with trimmers and different things. He was very good at teaching through he his was. videos. Yep. And um, from there, I was watching other lawn care business owners, or, you know, like lawn care millionaire, different different channels like that, just learning business in general. Mm-hmm. Um and I tried starting a YouTube channel a long time ago. I got a couple of videos that were horrible. <laughs> <laughs> we all have those. I mean, you know, the, but um, the, the spirit was there, and I wanted to do it. Well, finally, you know, our, our business got to the point where I had some extra time, and I had some extra money. Um, I was putting a lot of energy into making Facebook videos. Okay. And I was doing Facebook Lives, but I really wanted to do YouTube, and I was like, I need to commit on this. So I bought this really crappy Nikon camera from, from Walmart. I was like, okay, it's 300 bucks. I don't really have the money for that right now. But, um, you know, if I get it, I'll commit to making these videos. So I started doing that and making more like a vlog style video of what mm-hmm. I was doing. And that's cool, but they don't get any traction. And I realized that um, kind of the start to finish jobs, the com- completion and showing the jobs, talking about what I'm doing, right. uh, they, they had a little more traction. And then... I was also talking to business owners. Dude. 
<laughs> Sorry, I don't have his collar charge. He'd be he'd be a different dog right now. It's all right. Um, so, anyways, he uh, I was I was doing commentary talking to business owners because at that time it was really only you know uh, lawn care guys watching lawn care guys. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like who would who would watch lawn care for the enjoyment of watching lawn care? It doesn't make much sense. Although the the homeowner guys, um, right. It was a little bit different. So I actually looked at your channel when I, I started figuring out, hey, I need to uh, adjust my channel a little bit. Because I was like, man, Alan Haynes got a big channel. How's he got a bigger channel than these other guys that are doing lawn care stuff, right? Well, what I figured out is there's the business guys, small group of people. You got right. homeowners, bigger group of people. Much bigger group, right? Everybody has a lawn. Yeah. And so I came to the realization I need to reach a wider audience. And then I also started looking at YouTube a little bit different. And I said, well, there's really only two main reasons somebody would watch a video, education or entertainment. Mm -hmm. So education is always going to be smaller. Entertainment's going to (laughs) be, hey, Doofy, sit, dude. Sit. He's trying to be a good boy. He's he's trying. (laughs) He's been working hard, man. (laughs) Anyways, uh yeah, so it, entertainment's never going to do as well, as, or uh, education's never going to do as yeah, well. Yeah, it's a bigger audience with entertainment, right? Yeah, yeah and, and, and education's more like work. You want me to put him in the other room? Yeah, I mean, if let's, yeah. let's do that real quick. So yeah, Kevin. So what you were saying is you were kind of looking at, um, and we'll reset the timeline, but you were kind of looking at, hey, I can teach, but that's a smaller audience. Where if I go for entertainment, a bigger audience. So where's the timeline here? How long? How many years ago is this where you're kind of making that that decision or or coming to that understanding? Um. So, t- 2020 okay. and 2021, I, st- I started, 2020 is when the channel started doing all right, but I, that's when I started kind of figuring out I need to um, really focus on trying to make it more entertaining, bring more value to it. Yeah, I was really being um, very subjective with looking at my videos and going, okay, that, that sucks, that can be better, this is super boring, and in general, what I'm doing is like a really boring type video. But, you know, by changing the the angles and putting right. more Having effort into filming and, right. and showing my personality, and um, then, then I can make it more entertaining. If you can make it more entertaining, somebody might enjoy it. I mean, I've got videos that are two hours long, and people say they watch the whole thing, which is just yeah. insane to me. It's a huge compliment. Anyways, so. <laughs> and people like to watch work. What do yeah. you, I mean, they do. And it has a payoff. So when did you, at what point? And through this, were you able to, because I'm assuming you don't have a traditional lawn service anymore, right? This is your full-time gig now. When did you, when were you able to stop the traditional lawn care and go full-time as this iteration here? Yeah, it's pretty wild. I had a, actually had my first video go viral from my second channel. And shortly after that, I went full-time in YouTube. So, mm, okay. and the second channel is called the Boring Channel. Mm-hmm. Because the first channel, like I said, it was lawn care guys talking to lawn care guys. So it was me mowing, and then I'd throw tips or just talking about whatever and maybe sharing an inspirational speech that I heard that I really liked. So I started this other channel because people told me, hey, we want that, but without the talking. And I thought, man, that's boring, right? (laughs) So I started the boring channel as a joke, but it took off. You know, I put three videos up. The third one took off like a rocket. Um, ended up getting like 8 million views real fast. Wow, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was crazy. And so that's right away. You're like, that's it. I'm going for this. This is my thing. Did you know that right away? Well, cause it I takes mean, some guts to do that, right? It's, oh, it does. it's not a, it, it's not hard. a traditional business, you know, you're putting a lot of faith in it. So, you know, but whatever works in your life, you're going to double down on it. Mm-hmm. If, if you're thinking about it and you're logical and you make a good decision, and you're going to try to replicate that success. So, you know, I, I kept working, kept getting a few videos to do decent. And then I told my wife, I'm like, look, I know I can get clients. Let's just take the risk. We weren't making much off of YouTube at that point either. But I said, let's take the risk. I'm going to jump in this. Worst case scenario, I had to build clients up. And I said, in about a month, I can get the same number of clients and we'll be back to where we were. So why not just, you know, Enjoy this for the ride it is. Maybe it lasts two years. Maybe it lasts a lifetime. We don't know yet. Right. So I just, uh, I, w- I went all in pretty quick, probably quicker than I should have. 
but it worked out perfect. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say quicker <laughs> than you should have. I said I think you got to strike while the iron's hot, right? Yeah, you know. So I mean, so this is really so three years full time then, kind of. Yeah, this will be like the third year, I think. And I mean, you're already at almost eight hundred thousand on one, five hundred thousand on another. I'd say you're doing a lot of right, a lot of the right things. So and so that goes back to your idea. You said maybe next year it'll be house painting or something else. So that's. But the, uh, the underlying mission now has become a giving thing. Is that is that the underlying mission of Juggernaut Lawn Care or whatever, you know, the lawn, is that well, that's giving kind of, back? That's kind of what it always was. It would just yeah. look different because I had a different budget. Right. You know, so before it was giving advice to, to people that were struggling starting up their lawn business and just in hopes that if they're struggling, I can help them skip a few years with a little bit of advice, you know, skip some pain and... And because those first years right. in business, if you don't know what you're doing, they suck yeah. and they're just rough. So it started out with that because when you don't have money and what you can give is advice and I didn't have any expendable income. Well, now it's turned into I'm traveling around cutting people's yards. But before that, it was cutting yards locally. And I'd right. work six days a week on the seventh day. I'd go out and cut somebody's yard for free. And then, you know, in my off time, it was like two years with probably three or four hours of sleep every night because you know when I edit it's at night and when you're working doing you know 20 lawns a day and then you got bush trimming and everything else when it's all done it's just, right. it's a constant cycle of never any work that has to be done so you're always working six days a week in the lawn business if not seven um, so in my off time I go cut a video or shoot a video and then I'd edit when my wife and daughter were asleep that's really the perfect time anyways because Audio is going to be good if I do a voiceover. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I ran myself ragged for a long time to, to kick it off. And then once it kicked off, it's like, this is really cool. And I don't want to say I got lazy, but I, I allowed myself to breathe a little bit. And I don't well, want to do good. that anymore. You know what I mean? So I want to, I want to keep pushing forward, give it the same consistency, the same uh, attitude and strength and, and just determination that I have with the business on – I'm going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And it's really evolved because now it's, it, you know, financially we're, we're in a decent situation currently. I mean, it's not, again, it could be two years. It could be a lifetime. I don't know. Right now I'm in a horrible spot financially. When you think of the sense of long-term investments, I haven't made a whole lot of long-term investments. Well, I'm you're sure. investing in yourself. Exactly. And I'm kind of stacking it on the side and mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. I'm still learning about money. It, it's weird when you don't have money, you don't know what, you, when you don't have money, you think, man, if I had some money, I could put it over into this and I'd be okay. I'd like, I'd be, I'd be perfect for the rest of my <laughs> life. Well, then money, kind of, money comes along and you're so nervous to invest because you've never had it and you don't want to make a mistake. So now I'm going this through this process and obviously talking to financial advisors and figuring out where to, where to actually, where to put things so that we can make this last a lifetime versus last a short period of time yeah and then the other thing is you know making sure that we're doing really cool projects um i'm christian based as well so i look at my work almost like tithing okay so yeah. you know straight out the gate 10 percent of what we're doing is tithing uh the best of the videos are you know 100 percent for the lord and it's going to be a situation where a lot of my videos people people never see for one reason or another you know, so I'll go out and I'll make this video and then nobody sees it, but I don't know. Maybe it'll come out and like I said, in 10 years, who knows? Mm -hmm. It's stacked up. Obviously, you know, I don't know if the niche is going to last that long. So I'm, I'm putting out good work, doing good videos. I don't know. I feel like I'm giving really bad advice. If you go out and make a video, <laughs> don't put it out. Don't sit on it forever. But, you know, we've got a, we got two editors now. And so right now I'm making sure our main editor, Jessica, has enough work to be consistent and make very good income. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the sense of that, I want to give her, have you ever heard of golden handcuffs? <laughs> Tell me your definition. Uh, they make enough income. They got a, a sweet enough deal that they don't want to go anywhere else. So like if she wants to learn okay. about editing, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, putting it through different training courses online, whatever. I'll invest in her as much as she wants. As, as long as she wants to continue learning, I want to keep, 
allowing her to get better as she goes. Yeah, well, I think that's just being a good boss, being a good mentor. Yeah. You know, just, you know, if people are getting better because they work with you, they'll work with you forever because they're you're bettering them. That's that's how the best organizations work. She's super dedicated. Yeah. Super well, she's dedicated. she believes. I, we have employees like that, too. And yeah. I'm like, the, you can tell that the reason they work so hard is because they believe in what we're doing. It's like, wow, thank you for believing in what I, my dream is. Thank you. Like, yeah. And so the way you thank them is you want to build them up. You want to make them better. So that's a that's just a, being a great boss. <laughs> you must have a really supportive wife, too, because you're on the road a lot. And yeah. so how long have you been married? Uh, Ten years now. Yeah. So she, she fully supports it. She was on the road with me last year. But um, currently she's not on the road with me. It was really hard leaving because we just had our, our second child. Oh, and, congratulations. Uh, I appreciate not on leaving, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's been, you know, he's like two and a half months old. Okay. But it was so hard leaving. and But it just is what it is. I mean, she knows that when I'm committed and I got this crazy thing that I want to do, I'm going to do it. And she's super supportive. And she knows that I'm going to do whatever's best for the family. So it's like less of an ego thing and less of I want to do this for me or I want to do this for the money or. Honestly, I could care less about the money. I've, I've been, um, we've been super broke and I've been just as happy, but I, it is easier to be happy when you got money because you don't have to mm-hmm. worry about simple things like if you got to have a, uh, you got a cavity, well, the option when you have no money is you're going to have that tooth pulled. Yeah. Versus you can have it fixed. Mm. So, you know, like it sucks being that broke. It sure does. So I think we've all been there at some point, but yeah. Yeah. I, I going totally from it. that to, you know, anyways, my, my goal isn't so much for myself. It's I just want to make sure that my family's taken care of. So for me, I'm willing to, I'm willing to, I, you know, it's like a short-term sacrifice for a long-term game. I'm willing to just absolutely wreck my body with work, knowing that I'm going to get to spend time with them. Like I said, it might be three years of really hard work. I'm still going to get to spend, you know, four months of the year. Right. Completely dedicated to them. Mm -hmm. Or I could work year round if I wanted. Ultimately, what's going to happen is we're going to get our daughter homeschooling. We're going to go on the road. We're going to spend two years doing it or something. We're going to love it and enjoy it as a family. I'll end up working five days a week and spend the rest of the time with them somewhere interesting and different, you know, and it'll be an awesome experience. Kind of like this, this year when we went on the road for two and a half months and we were in a different state every other week. Um, and it was, it was cool. We stayed on the beaches and yeah, I have friends that have done family. that too. They say you get really close. It's it's not easy to live in a, in a travel trailer together, but when you do it, it really teaches you how to just, it teaches you a lot. I've heard. So it was amazing. Yeah. It was a great experience. You must really love to travel, huh? I've never, I've never had the opportunity to travel. It wasn't, um, right before my channel took off or, business started making decent money Mm -hmm. and so it was kind of a hard decision to leave you know because of the money but we took our first vacation my wife and I together since we've been married you know so that was cool we went to Galveston which isn't like crazy (laughs) you know but it Uh was it was different but the other thing is it wasn't like a vacation where it was we got to go out and take this vacation and then it's us it was it was we're gonna pay half the hotel we're going to pay half the travel expenses, stuff like that. And I'm driving my mother-in-law's car and we're going with her and one of her other friends that's there. They were doing something in Houston. They're like, Hey, if you drive the car and pay half the half, half the hotel, you guys can come with. So it was cool. You know, got to drive down there with my, my family and my wife and I went walking on the beach with our daughter and stuff. So it wasn't like a legit family vacation, but then the next year we, we went to, uh, I don't know, Surfside Beach was like an hour away from Galveston, and we stayed on the beach, you know, and that Moving was up. like right after channel, <laughs> the channel took off, yeah. Good and we you, spent, man. you know, like two weeks on the beach, and it was it was amazing. And I don't know, it's, it's been a really cool evolution, but I don't want it to stop. Things are things are happening with the family, and it's, it's really good. And yeah, you got to do it while you're young, man. So these are the times, when you you know what I'm saying? Just like you're saying, just go for it while you, while you can. I got a question. Do you like Bucky's? Bucky's, yeah, Bucky's <laughs> is cool. My daughter loves it. Yes. <laughs> Every time I talk to somebody that travels a lot and drives a lot, I drive a lot too. I always talk about Bucky's. And I know Paul knows about Bucky's over there in Georgia. Yeah, it's so. a unique gas station. Isn't it? It is a, it's a, I haven't, 
really, I don't know the complete story of it, but it's just cool because they cater to, they cater to folks like us, not the truckers. It's yeah. a truck stop for not for truckers, clean bathrooms. I mean, the whole thing, good food. I mean, it's a, it's an interesting story, interesting brand. Yeah, their so. employees are all in too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, which you, is cool. It's just a great place to go if you just need somebody to smile at. You just go to Bucky's. You know, yeah. people are so happy. So, Paul, tell me a little bit more about this mastermind group that you're in, because, um, you know, Kevin's saying about collaboration and stuff. That's that's really what this is about, and I love it that your your circle of of friends we all collaborate. I love that, you know. So, tell me, what's this mastermind all about, Paul? What are you guys? working on yeah that. so jason krill called me out of the blue one day and he said hey i got a youtube coach jeremy and he wants to get a pod of five of five people in the industry and he's going it's going to we're just going to immerse ourselves in youtube okay and the the theory is if five people collaborate together they grow and you've seen this you pioneered it but then popped off al blades followed you which that's a whole nother cool story. He told Al to start this style content. And then Al's first video went viral <laughs> with this awesome. style content. Well, he put out a video and then I shared it and then he went all in making it. So he knew he had to take advantage of it. Like I said, right. Strike while they aren't. Well, know, I love that you guys are doing the whole all boats rise together deal, right? Yeah. Let's work together. Cause we know the tide's going to lift all the ships. I don't look, great at way to look at it. I don't look at them as competitors, but if you did in that sense, I created my best competitors. Like I've really helped enforce these guys. Like yeah, just embrace them as they as they come up. And There's so much tips and stuff. Have so many you people? Have awesome. you listened to the uh, Mr. Beast and Lex Friedman's? Uh, yes, I have. I I bet you Mr. Beast is is your your whole philosophy sounds Mr. Beast kind of. Um, yes, I have. Mr. Beast, when he's talking to Lex Friedman, he said, "I don't view anything as my competition. I view them as collaborators." Mm -hmm. And that, that really stuck out to me. But you guys popped together. Al Blades, you, you were the pioneer, then Al Blades, SB Mowing, my friend Phil's Lawn Care. And there's, there's a few other ones I just, I, I can't keep up with all of it. But mm -hmm. I, you know, I watch y'all grow. So that philosophy is what the YouTube coach is like. If I can get five of you together and you can collaborate together, we can all grow. And he, he jokes around. And for those of you who know Jason, he, he he's lighthearted. But he's like, yeah. if Jason can get a silver play button, anybody <laughs> can. <That's> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, that's a good point. So I'm, I've just been submitting myself to my coach. And, and, of course, I'd rather be sitting back in Georgia today. But I, when the juggernaut calls and says, you know, you want to collaborate, I'm like, I'm, I'm there. I drove nine hours. Yeah. And, and thanks for – you know. Well, that's why when uh, when Brett told me you guys were in town, I'm like, let's see if we can get him on the podcast. So that's why I'm like, I would love to come and talk to y'all. And, you know, I just, I like to support you in whatever way I can, but I'm also just interested, right? Because we're all, we're all doing this thing that there's no playbook for YouTube. Like there's no, we're learning it. All of us are. So yeah. I like, I can always learn from what you guys do and where you come from too. Yeah. So I've, so. I've just been trying to learn, learn, learn from, from Kevin and just seeing, you know, what he does and how he's thinking of the viewer as he's making these videos it's it's been mind-blowing to me so it's been very helpful and i'm curious what you think alan about podcasting because what my coach is telling me and my coach knows people at youtube so he so i'll keep it vague so i don't get him in trouble <laughs> but if you go to youtube.com forward slash podcast you'll see dave ramsey show and a whole bunch of people that are video podcasting mm -hmm. and so youtube is pushing that heavy and incentivizing those guys. I would agree with that. Heavy. And so what my coach is telling me is to record a podcast like this and then just take the clips just like Joe Rogan does and put the clips out and put the whole podcast out. And he's like, eventually the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm is going to be favoring that style content. Whereas in the past, it seems like that content wasn't doing nothing. What yeah. are your thoughts? Well, definitely put those clips on Facebook too. They do real well there. But um, so I, I agree a hundred percent with that. I think YouTube uh, only likes podcasts and shorts and doesn't like anything in the middle anymore. So if you're doing the long form content, they love that podcast. Um, obviously there's some things that'll always, you know, be out there, but like, I think they really want shorts and I think they really want podcasts. That's like their two big things. That's, I haven't talked to anybody about it, but that's just how I feel about it. So, you know, shorts are fun. They're different. You know, I like podcasts. I need to podcast. You more. had a Makita, was it Makita so. one that went viral? <laughs> yeah. I showed how to sharpen a mower blade. But the, so, you know, the way that you make uh, shorts or TikToks go viral from my perspective is you do something that's going to make people tell you you're wrong uh, or argue with you about something. And Con so controversy in the comments. If yeah. You can get them to drive to the comments. Right. It'll take off. Yeah. So TikTok's that's how it's the same way. So did you make your video intentionally 
irking people in the comments? No, but no, but I knew it would anyway because I'm just a DIYer and I I I I look like a monkey using tools. So th I knew it would. But I the thing I do is when I take the blade off, I mark the the bottom side of the blade with a marker, just so when I put it back on, it's easy for me to see. So I don't put the blade on upside down because I actually did that once and I shared it in a video. Hey, look, DIYers, dumb me, I put a blade on upside down. So this was years ago. Mm -hmm. So I just mark it now. It's like a thing I do. Oh my God, the, you should hear the people telling me if, if you have to mark the bottom side of a blade, you have no business even sharpening the blade. Stuff, I mean, mall, I mean, total boomers. And I'm just like, and I actually had a guy that said something like that and I said, okay, thanks, boomer. And I ratioed him. But I'm just like, I'm like, this kind of funny. I'm learning a lot from that. Like, if you think about it, people say, well, there's no labor in the market today. We can't find people to hire. Well, that's because you act like that. That's why you, nobody wants to work for you, bro. That's, so I'm learning a lot from that, but yeah, that's what you have to do. Sometimes I'll throw trash in the road in a, in a video. I clean it up, obviously, but man, I get a billion, bunch of comments about that. So Yeah, blow grass yeah. in the road. Yep. Watch what happens. Yeah. Do, <laughs> so, I mean, do, it, it, do it with your mower. I personally do, do not like, wrong. I don't like having to do that, but that's what YouTube seems to favor, and we do have to play those games. So, yeah, I'll do some of those with the shorts. But I'm still doing 10, 12-minute content teaching. That's my thing, man. I just teach people and... If I get fewer viewers, it's fine because I have a business now. So I'm really making content for my customers now more than for YouTube's algorithm. So maybe that's my cop out. <laughs> that's really good. I was but, talking to the lawn tools. Uh, he's an yeah. eye doctor out in um, Arkansas. And he's doing really well with TikToks and shorts and, and Instagram reels and things of that nature. And he intentionally will make a video to, to make people upset. So his, he's very good at it. His most viral video, he's like, I'm going to do three things in one video, not just one thing. And so he didn't edge his neighbor's yard just to be petty, even though it was a really small little strip. I saw that one. People and, were so angry at him for yeah, that. Yeah, and then he wore ostentatious shoes that were, like, perfectly clean. Like, no, they're not your New Balance Alan Haynes shoes They're <laughs> with grass stains. They were clean, and, and you could tell it wasn't obviously worn. And then when he got done, he blew all the grass into the street. So he's like, I'm going to see what's going to happen if I don't just make – if he just would have blown the grass in the street, the video would have done well. Or if he just was petty and didn't edge the neighbor, it would have done well. He's like, I'm going to do three things to make people upset. And lo and behold, it had over 30 million views just yeah. like that from that that recipe. So funny. So my issue is I, the main way I um, monetize my green industry podcast is through sponsors. So I'm always paranoid. Like, mm -hmm. what if some sponsor is watching this and thinks I'm an idiot? Like, not knowing I'm trolling people in the algorithm. So anyway, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a game. I think some of the, you know, the challenge, I've talked to a few guys that, that are big on TikTok when I go to some different events and stuff. The challenge is, is what, how do you get those people into some sort of place where you can work with them in the future? In other words, can you get them on an email list or how do you get them to download your app? It's really tough, it seems, from TikTok to, to build an audience that sticks. So you have to keep doing that virality all the time. And man, that would just wear on me having to, having to always hope for that. You know, I like having a, sta a st stable business now where we have customer lists and things like that, you know, that we have control over and we can contact when we need to and not to rely on an algorithm to get in front of them. So just a different kind of challenge for sure. You said in the warehouse, or you might have brought it up, Juggernaut, we're sitting in your warehouse with all your fertilizer. And like when you started your YouTube channel, this wasn't, it's not like you started the YouTube channel with this is my end destination. I'm going to have this incredible warehouse and in uh, Florida and, and be guys fertilizer <laughs> suppliers. How, how did that all happen? Well, I originally uh, wanted to just sell eBooks because that was, that's what I am. I'm essentially a writer, you know, and I write an eBook that teach people how to take care of their grass. And we did, we've sold uh, maybe 15,000 copies of my eBook now. Um, but when I started out, I was the only one with an eBook. Well, now every lawn care guy has an eBook. So, <laughs> so I had to evolve that way. Um, and then number two, it's what the audience started asking for. So in my eBooks, I'd recommend fertilizer for them to use. And I would always recommend store-bought fertilizer, Melorganite, because it was in every single store and people could get it. Well, Melorganite sold out literally. And so then people started getting mad at me because my books were recommending a fertilizer that they couldn't get because it was sold out. And so that's when I started figuring out, well, I guess we'll go create our own. Let's learn how to make fertilizer. It was selling out because of your influence. I mean, you could say that. Sure. I mean, it, it's, it did. And so... I started, I knew what I liked in NPK and I wanted miners and I knew that kind of stuff, but I was like, I don't even know how to, who do I talk to? So I started asking around and found a partner who would blend some fertilizer for me. And we, 
we released some. Originally, we were using somebody else's fertilizer. We were selling another brand of fertilizer, but that company went out of business. And that's when I said, well, I just got to create my own so I control my own destiny. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we did. So our yard mastery fertilizer is only four years old. Uh, so, but that's where we're at. So kind of what necessity, you know, the audience tells you what they want over time. I got a question for you, Alan. Um, my sister lives in South Carolina. I feel like a first long time listener, first time caller here. <laughs> Uh, my sister lives in South Carolina. She's got a big tree in her backyard, so she doesn't get much sunlight whatsoever. And I have three little nieces, and they have a place set back there, but it's just all dirt. They tried to seed it with zoysia last spring, and, and for whatever reason, they weren't successful. Mm-hmm. So as a gift, that my niece's birthday is March 4th. I wanted to sod the backyard and get them a nice yard, but I'm working with very minimal sunlight. And I think they have St. Augustine and zoysia. In, in Charleston, South Carolina, they live right by the ocean. What, what's your recommendation to bless my nieces with a nice yard? So do you know what kind of tree it is? Is it an oak? I think it is. It's, it's humongous, and it covers the majority of the backyard. Yeah, so I would say that trees and dogs are the natural enemy to lawns. <laughs> trees especially, though. So the challenges with trees is it, we think of the shade, right? That's number one. But it's really more than that. There's roots that are competing with spa- for space in the soil. So you have that. Those roots also take away nutrients and water from the grass. And then, yes, you do have the shade, but the real thing, especially with trees like oaks, is when it rains, there's salts that wash off the leaves. and The leaves hit the ground and spoil the soil and kill the grass below. So you're kind of fighting all of those things. So I always tell people that uh, if you want a quick lawn, I would just go get some annual rye, and I would just put annual rye grass out there. It'll grow and it'll live for a couple of weeks. It's not that hot yet either because it's when is the when is this event? Well, the event's March 4th, but I'm thinking long yeah. term. My, my nieces are three and, and one and they got a playground back there. And I just feel like, I, you know, I'm I'm the yard guy and, and my nieces have a dirt yard. I'm like, yeah. I want to put grass back there for them. It's just tough because not only that, they're playing on it. So now you have foot traffic you're adding to it. So I, that's, I wish I had an answer for you. I mean, you could resod it every year, but it's just. Well, if I resod it this year, what would, what would make you not have confidence next year? It would It would be grass still back there. Because you just have too many things working against you with dense shade and that tree and foot traffic. It's just, it's a lot. If I want to try, would I? Because <laughs> I've already determined in my heart I want to see grass back there. For well, like that. I said, I would do annual rye right away. So, you, by, so now go throw annual rye down and just it'll look really nice by the time you get to the to March. It'll be beautiful, but it won't last forever. But, but if I want to do sod, would I do um, St. Augustine or? Well, you're uh, definitely not doing Bermuda grass. Well, right. I, I know Too that. many clouds will kill Bermuda grass. So, I mean, St. Augustine, maybe if you get Palmetto St. Augustine. um, I would think that would do best. Better than Zoysia? But it, yeah. But now, but see, St. Augustine grass doesn't, doesn't feel good under your feet either. It's not a, you know, it's not a soft grass like Zoysia is. Yeah. But for so, little kids, they're just going to run back there. I don't think they're going to care. Yeah. yeah. I would say St. Augustine would be your best bet. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't have a better answer for you, man. It's just such a challenge. I mean, you, you know, I know you want the little kids to have a beautiful grass, but... <laughs> Well, when I call the sod farm, of course, they're going to sell me. Oh, yeah, St. Augustine will look great. And so I was like, okay. Yeah. But I was like, they've never had grass back there ever. And you inspired me watching you bless those people. I want to. Well, the other thing is if when it comes to leaf season, if they don't pick up the leaves, yeah, it's going to choke out the grass as well. Yeah, they do have a service. They do have a uh, guy that comes in. Yeah. Oh, well, blame it. him then. <laughs> So Palmetto St. Augustine is what they got in South Carolina? Uh, well, Palmetto is traditionally a better shade tolerant okay. um, if they have it there. But they'll tell you. What are the, they, I don't know if they still grow bitter blue. I'm not sure what they grow up there. But what, What's your philosophy on prepping the, the grass or the, the soil beforehand? Oh, well, I got the bunch of stuff in this warehouse that you can buy from me. No. All right. <laughs> no, Yardmastery.com? Little, yeah, yardmastery.com. A little starter fertilizer. I like a little sea kelp also. Sea kelp to help push the roots out fast. So that's about all. Lots of water. So, Okay. Thanks, Alan. Good. <laughs> you can always go out to a random field, get you a bunch of Johnson grass seeds. That's going to grow anywhere. Yeah, right. There you go. All the neighbors will I would suggest you. not doing that. That's well, like an, an STD for your lawn. Yeah. And the neighbors will, will love you for that. I like making videos with it, though. It's my, one of my favorite grasses to cut. Anyways, my bad. Well, that's good. You guys, I, I tell you what, I know you guys have been working hard all day, and I'm going to let you get out of here, but I appreciate you coming in. And uh, Kevin, tell everybody where they can find you on all your different socials or 
where they should look. Yeah, so on uh, YouTube and Facebook, it's Lawn Care Juggernaut and The Boring Channel. And on TikTok, it's Lawn Care Juggernaut. Instagram, it's Lawn Care Juggernaut. Awesome. Paul, tell them where they can find you. Green Industry Podcast. I have a podcast for lawn care and landscape business owners. We talk about the business side of things, what what to charge your customers, and, and how to build a business that's profitable and things of that nature. So it's called the Green Industry Podcast. And if Jason Creel and my mastermind work out, you'll see me on on the YouTube. So my channel over there is Green Industry Podcast with Paul Jamison. Oh, you know what? One thing. Are we allowed to talk about the uh, conference? That's yes, co- yes, yes, yes. So he called me the other day. And February I'm gonna, I'll be there. 23rd and 24th of 2024, Jason Curl and, and his wife Tracy are having the Lawn Care Life Conference. It's the fourth year. So they, they had it. I've been the there last every one, year. Yeah. I've been every year. The last one was before, right as COVID was breaking out yeah. or starting. And uh, anyway, they haven't had it the last few years. They own a big wedding venue in Trustville, Alabama, or Springfield, Alabama. Trustville. 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 You got to say it that way. Trustville. Yeah, Trustville, Alabama. And so you're the big fish, Alan. We Internally, <laughs> Jason, I can get a big fish. He's telling our, our mastermind, I, I can get a big fish. I can get a big fish. And so uh, Alan's going to be the, the keynote speaker, and, and this is on limited to 300 people because the the wedding venue can only only do 300. So Yeah, and I'll say, I've been like I said, I've been every year. And uh, I really like, I only speak, this is the only conference I ever speak in, and I do it because Jason's been a friend for a long time, but also because the group of guys and girls that come to this, they're a really cool group of people. They're certain, they're all in a certain size kind of business mm-hmm. that, and, and I don't know, I just really like the people. So it's really nice to go back and talk with them and, and the crowd's always very responsive and, and I always get a lot out of it. So I would recommend anybody that's looking to go to a conference that's, that's going to get you a lot of information. It's not overhyped and full of a lot of other stuff that you may not want to see. This conference is really for you. It's, I've really enjoyed being there. So I think so. Yeah, a lot Naylor's coming as well. Uh, There's your big fish, man. No, you're the big fish. Yeah. <laughs> Kay, Caleb and Brittany are coming. No, that's the big fish. Naylor, oh. Tally Farrow, and uh, the, the YouTube coach is going to be there, Jeremy Vest. Good. He's coming wow. down, and uh, I think I'm leaving someone out, but – um. Yeah, be, be there. I'm really looking forward. And that's not 2023, that's 2024. It's, yep. a, it's a year out. Awesome. Good stuff. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, y'all, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that interview. And, you know, Kevin and I and Paul, we talked a little bit afterwards and everything. We talked a little bit more about business and kind of the, the economics of being an influencer. And, man, it's such an interesting, interesting concept, this whole new thing. We don't like the word influencer, but that's what they call us. And we kind of talked about, you know, how do you navigate this world? There isn't like any kind of training course for it. So, that was really interesting. Maybe I'll have him back. I would like to have him back. Uh, and I would also like to go do a collab with him as well. And uh, in the end there, we did mention the um, Lawn Care Life Conference. So we'll be at it 2024. So you guys, I'll give you links in the description below to that. Happy to have you come out for that. It's a really cool thing. And I'll be doing a keynote there. Lots of other stuff. So with that, I want to just say real quick, if you want more content, I will give you a link to the Yard Mastery YouTube channel. I've been putting out quite a bit of content there. It's more customer focused. It's more answering questions for customers. We're at that point now where I can actually make videos that will save people having to to write in and and do all that kind of stuff. I can make videos when I see a lot of different questions coming in. And I think that they end up being helpful for everybody. So I'll give you a link below to that. And like I said, this is Lawns Across America. This is my podcast. This is one of my favorite things to do. And I will make that pledge (laughs) this year that I'll give you more podcast content. With that, I'm Alan Hayden, the Lawn Care Nut. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And I'll see you in the lawn. Thank you.